This video is about replacing the belts in a BioCard 5000. For more information, please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or go to my webpage at www.biolover.com. The BioCard 5000 has five belts. We see here the top of the tape drive. The cassette holder is already taken off. So you see here one belt that goes around the turntables, so that drives the two spools of the cassette. And this belt is driven via this pulley from with this belt by the motor. On the bottom of the tape drive, and the flywheel cover is taken off, we have the main belt, the flat belt that drives the two flywheels and then there is a small belt that drives this pulley here that then uh, uses the fifth belt to drive the counter. Okay, let's put these belts in. The first step of course is to take the tape drive out. And this is actually a fairly simple operation. All we have to do is to loosen or to take these two screws out and then loosen the solenoid that is bolted against the enclosure bottom and then we can move this bracket forward and that gives us enough room to move the tape drive a little bit forward to release it from a bolt that goes into an orifice at the back of the tape drive and then we can actually lift it out. Then the only thing that still holds it is a multi-pin plug that is inserted in the back of the tape drive. So first step is taking out the plug to the head assembly and now we're just taking these screws out. The next step is to lift the enclosure up and loosen the two screws at the bottom that hold the solenoid. In order to do this it's good to bolt on the keypad, the control pad, to the enclosure so things are held in place while we lift it up. So we can just put the three screws here, here and over here, we don't see it, uh, on, on this side and that holds the control panel securely in place while we lift up the enclosure. These are the two screws on the bottom so just loosen these, don't take them out so one can move the solenoid. Okay, now we move the solenoid forward and lift the drive out. And now we need to remove the plug in the back of the drive so we can take it out. It's a little bit tight. Right, here we go. I decided to exchange the belts at the bottom of the drive first. So that's the main flat belt that drives the flywheels that are under this cover and this small belt that drives the pulley that then drives the belt that goes to the counter. So for taking this cover off there are three springs that need to be removed, one here and one on either side and then a screw in the back and then we can take this cover off. It's a really good idea to mark where these uh, springs go, so when you put it back together you know where they hook in. So let's speed this up a little. So here's the screw and now we can take the cover off. Now we can exchange the belts. First we take out the flat belt and now we can exchange the counter belt. So this is the new one. Here's a detailed shot of the counter belt underneath the flywheel, so it has to go into this groove. Okay, so that's the counter belt. 
and now we can put the main flat belt in around the capstan wheels. Now it's time to put the flywheel cover back in. And that's essentially just doing everything in reverse. So I'm speeding this up a little. We can actually leave these two springs here on and on the other side out uh, because they would have to be removed again to get at the top belt. So screw back in and the spring in the back and that's it. To get at the belts on top of the drive we have to first take out these two pressure wheel arms and then the cassette holder and then we can um, remove the metal part that's underneath that carries the uh, heads and then we can exchange the belts. So let's do the pressure wheel arms so it's good to pull this bar back and release them and now is a locking ring tool while pulling the arms up we can get them out Now we need to remove these springs on both sides. And now it's time to remove these rivets that hold the cassette holder hinges. So here it's good to use pliers to push the rivet out while opening the locking ring. Now we need to take these uh, bolts out at the bottom of the cassette holder assembly so we can slide it out through this gap and we need to do this on both sides of course like the entire operation. So here we go. Okay, the bolt is out and now we need to do it on the other side. Now it's time to take the cassette holder off. The rivets are out, the bolts are gone down here, so now we can slide it out. The only thing one needs to be a little bit careful with is that the uh, cassette holder is attached with wires to the base of the drive. So now we can take it out. The next step is to take this screw out and this screw holds this plate in place relative to the head carrier plate and it is very important that one marks the position of this uh, plate so that one can put it back into the exact same location because this determines essentially at what point the eject mechanism releases the uh, cassette holder. The next step is to take this pulley off and so again we use the locking ring tool while pulling the pulley up. It's a little bit tricky because one can hardly get the tool in.
The head carrier plate is attached with two more things to the base of the drive. One is the spring that needs to be taken out and we also need to widen this gap that we can uh, pull this fork out of the solenoid plunger here. That's a little bit a tricky operation but with a big screwdriver I was able to widen this gap sufficiently to get that fork out. That's the spring. Now we finally can take that carrier off. I should point out that there are two metal balls in these grooves. They are already removed here in this position, but they need to be secured before taking this, this carrier out. Um, and it's of course easy to lose them because they are round steel balls. There's another one, in my case this one was uh, held in place by some grease that was in this uh, groove here, but these two I took out before I removed the head carrier. The final step is to take the scale illumination off and then we can finally take the belt out. I put the new belt in and now we can put that head carrier back in. The first step is to pull the solenoid forward so that the fork can slide in. And also I tilted it a little so that these two balls, now here you see them, that they are at the far end of the drive body. And I pull this plate over because it needs to be on the outside. And so now it falls into place. It's a little bit tricky, but if one wiggles it enough and jiggles it and then it falls into place. In my case I had to take out this rubber damper so I could slide it far enough to clear it here at these uh, locations. Um, I didn't show that previously when I took the plate out. In my case this was cracked so I could just remove it otherwise I think one has to remove this locking mm. ring. Anyway, here we go, it's back in. Now it's time to put the pulley back in. And now we can actually demonstrate how this freewheeling mechanism works for the two turntables. See here just by reversing the rotation of the pulley we can select whether either we go forward or backward with either one of the uh, spools. And now we can put the locking ring back in. And finally the motor belt. Now 
Now we put screw 253 back in. And here it's important to make sure that this plate is in the same position as it was before. Now we need to bend that fork back together and put this spring back in the bottom here. Here's the spring. Now we can put the cassette holder back in. Now we need to get these rivets back on both sides. Back is much easier than taking them out. There we go. And on the other side. The next step is these bolts at the bottom that hold the springs. I put a counter nut on here because originally this nut is just held in place with a dab of paint which is of course gone now. So I just tighten this and that's it. Here's the bolt on the other side. Now we can put the springs back in. And now we can put the thrust roller arms back in. and now the locking rings. Now it's time to put the drive back in. The important things are that the drive is at the same height as it was before and at the same depth as it was before. Otherwise, um, the cassette holder will not fit properly into the cutout of the plexiglass cover that is on top of here. If there are issues with the eject mechanism, that there's either too much play or not enough play, uh, between the lever and the pad on the control panel, this can be adjusted with that screw 253 that holds this plate relative to the head carrier. Move this up or down and with this one can adjust the action point of the eject mechanism. This concludes my video about replacing the belts in a BioCard 5000. For more information please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or my website at www.biolover.com. Thanks for watching.